the height 600 pixels. And the fourth one specified the largest pixel value in this file, 255. So all the rest of the values are represented on one byte. And then the following three bytes, uh, sorry, three lines, three lines represent the red. This one is 223, represents the red component. Uh, 218 represents the green component and 214 represents the blue component of the pixel from the top left corner of the image. The pixel from the top left corner here. The following three values, three lines, represent the red, green and blue components of the next pixel. The one that's on the first row next to the one from the top left corner, the, the, the second pixel here. And then the following three the following three values represent the red, green, blue components of the next pixels on the right and so on until we reach the end of the first line and then we continue with the first pixel from the second line and so on. Okay, this is the format of uh, a, a, a PPMP3 file. Um, the PPMP6 file is similar to this one. It has the same header like this one, but instead of having uh, this red, green, blue components in textual format, and I mean, each of these values written separately on a new line, in PPMP6, we have those values written in binary in one byte. Uh, so if I open, let's go here to P6. <coughs> So you see here the same, here we have P6, but then we have the comment 800 per 600 pixels, 255. And then each byte represents the red or the green or the uh, blue component of the of a pixel, okay? And it is interpret, interpreted here as a symbol, uh, as an ASCII code of a symbol. And that's why you see all these characters, right? Because uh, the value of that byte, which is 214 or something, does not have a, a very pretty ASCII character associated to it. That's how we see this. So basically, you can choose whatever format you want, P3 or P6, but in P3, you can actually inspect the file using uh, a text editor. Uh, and in P3, you have to read line by line, and in P6, you have to read byte by byte, so binary reading after you read this, uh, four, uh, this first four lines. Uh, right. We can also close. Uh, let me close. Uh, yeah, let me close it. Right. So, in the, the in the in the first phase of the here the JPEG encoder, I have to change this. Means dividing the image into blocks of eight by eight pixels. So first, you have to read the PPM image this image and you have to convert each pixel value from the rgb red green blue color format uh, to the yuv or ycbcr uh, color format uh, y the, this means the luminance of the pixels of the pixel the light quantity of the pixel uh, the u or also called cb is chrominance blue the blue quantity of the pixel and v is the CR, V or CR is the chrominance red or the red quantity of the pixel. And these are just mathematical uh, color spaces. Uh, so mathematical tools used to express any general color. And you can convert between the RGB color space to the YUV or YCBCR color space using simple formula. They are specified here, but you can also find them if you write here uh, RG. Okay, and on Wikipedia, there are several formulas. Pretty much all of them work. I like the ones from uh, the International Telecommunication Union, this one, specified here. So if you have the R representing the red component and the G, the green component, and B, the blue component of a pixel, you can obtain the Y, C, B, C, R, chrominance blue, chrominance red, or the Y, U, V. They are the same Y, C, B, C, R with the Y, U, V. They are pretty much the same uh, color spaces. And you use this weighted average in order to obtain the Y component, the CB component, and the CR component. And the reverse one is pretty similar. Uh, this operation uh, that specifies here 0 and 255 is the clamping operation, meaning that this the expression Y plus 1.402 times CR minus 128 
This expression can give values uh, smaller than zero, can give results smaller than zero or larger than 255. And if that's the case, we should clamp the value to to the zero to 255 interval. If it's large, if it's smaller than zero, then set it to zero. If it's larger than 255, set it to 255. That's what this notation means, the clamp function. Okay, so I suggest to use this one, this uh, this formula. Although you can use this formula too, and this one too, it's also fine. Okay, so first you need to read the PPM image, read the pixels, convert each pixel from RGB to YUV, and then form three matrices. One for the Y component, one for the U component, one for the V component. This is just a guide of the implementation. You can also use one single matrix that has pixels, and each pixel has three fields, Y, U, and V. So it's up to you. This is just an example. Uh, then you need to divide the Y matrix and also the U and the V matrix into eight by eight pixel blocks, okay? And each for each pixel block, you need to store the 64 values, the 64 bytes, the type of the block, Y, and the position of the block in the image, because later on, uh, the decoder, you need to recompose the original image. Although this is still a guide, I mean, if you, if you store this 8 by 8 pixel blocks into three arrays, one for the Y component, one for the U component, one for the V component, and if you store the blocks in order, then you don't actually need the position of the block in the image anymore. So this is flexible. Okay, and the idea is, I have this picture, I think, I have this picture, uh, where this is the image, let's say this is the image, and you divide the image into 8 by 8 pixel block, first blocks. So first you take eight by eight, the first 8 by 8 pixels, which are this one, so 8, there are 8 pixels here, uh, the width of this is 8 pixels, the height is 8 pixels, and you take all these values, and this is the first block. The second block is the next 8 by 8 pixel values, and so on, so on, so forth so forth okay so you form this <laughs> eight by eight pixel blocks and that's the output of the encoder uh, of lab one uh this is for the y matrix for u and v matrix addition an additional step is required the so-called four to zero subsampling where you obtain for each eight, from each eight eight by eight pixel block of u or v values you obtain a four by four pixel block um, which does the following, which does the following. So if you have this eight by eight pixel block value, so here we have eight values, and then here we have eight values. Okay, what you need to do, what, what you need to do is take these four values, so two by two, these four values, compute their average, three plus four plus five plus six is 18, uh, divided, divided by four is um, 4.5, so you can take either four or five, let's take five, and instead of all these four values, you just use only one value, the average of them, which is five, okay, and write it here, then text, take the next two per two pixel block, Compute the average, which is now 6, 9, 10. 10 divided to 4, it's uh, uh, 2.5. Let's round it to 3. So you write only 3 here. And then you compute the average of these four values, and you write it here. Then you compute the average of these four values, and you write it here. Uh, so here. In the, similarly, in the same way, you compute the average value of this value uh, of these four values and write it here, and so on and so forth, so that you obtain um, a matrix with four um, four times four um, values, average values, and this is subsampling. Instead of this, which has eight by eight values, we obtain a four by four values matrix. And you need to do this for only for the U and V matrices, or only for the CB, CR matrices, not the Y matrix, okay? And you need to store the list of all these 8x8 eight eight Y blocks and 4x4 four four U and V blocks. Uh, you can print it on the screen, it's not necessarily, you can print it or not print it on the screen, it doesn't really matter. Okay, and the decoder part just gets this list of 8x8 eight 
Y blocks and 4x4 UNV blocks. Uh, and what it does is perform upsampling, okay, which is the reverse process of performed here, upsampling of these 4x4 UNV values in order to obtain back 8x8 pixel blocks. And those 8x8 pixel blocks of type Y, U, and V are used in order to form the initial image. Okay, then convert the, the Y, U, V, the, the color of the pixel from the y, pixels from the Y, U, V format to the RGB format, and then write, compose the, the image, and then write the image into another PPM, P3, or P6 format. And if we look at the image written by our decoder, then we should see an image very, very similar to the initial image. Okay, the upsampling, the, the reverse of this, the inverse of this subsampling process, the upsampling process, which is performed here in the decoder, is the following. So instead of this 4x4 four four matrix, you, you take this 5 value and write it in four places because you now don't have access to the previous values, 3, 4, 5, 6, but you can just take this 5 and place it here, and here, and here, and here. Okay. So you place five in this four uh, pixels, then you place the next one, three here, in the next pixels, right? And you next, you take this X and you place X in all four locations in the next pixel and so on. And you get, you get to an eight by eight matrix or an eight by eight pixel block, like this one. And, yeah, after you do this, uh, you now have uh, a, an array of 8 by 8 pixel blocks of type Y, an, eight by, uh, an array of 8 by 8 pixel blocks of type U, and an array of 8 by 8 pixel blocks of type V. And then out of this, you need to compose the initial image, so place everything in, in the proper position, like I've shown you here. Place the first block here, the second one here, and so on and then write the decoded image into a separate ppm file and we will look at the PP, we will open the ppm file with gimp or something else and see if the the decoded image looks the same as the input image if it does then your uh, your algorithm or program worked right um uh, yeah so uh, yeah i think this is the yeah, this is the first lab. This is what I wanted to to show you. Let me download the tendency list because it's uh, it's useful for me to um, um, when I have to give you grades at the lab. It's useful to have an Excel with your names, but otherwise I won't write that. I don't use the tendency at the lab or at the course. I think there's a question. What is the purpose of this conversion? It helps us efficiency wise. Why not kept in? Um, yeah, good question. <laughs> um, I normally answer this one when I talk about color spaces uh, uh, in the second course, when I talk about color spaces and JPEG. Uh, let me see if I have. I don't have it. Okay, I don't have it here. I have some examples, but I have them on and I won't boot right now, but I can show you. I think there are some images on Wikipedia. Uh Y U V. No. Or Y C B C R. There were some images with the house. Yeah, this one. <coughs> so the idea with Y U V is that here is the original image. Here is the the Y, the luminance part of this image. Okay. Here is the chrominance blue, the, the 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 blue parts, the blue components of this image. And here is the or the the U, or, and here is the V or the CR chrominance red of the image. Right. You see that there is a little bit of uh, red here, but very little little. And here in the house, a little bit of red, more little bit of red here. And the idea that is that in the RGB color format, uh, the information contained in the picture, when I say the information contained in the picture, is what uh, differentiates this picture from a picture of me or whatever. 
What makes this picture different, which represents a house and some mountains and, and a plane, which makes this this picture very different than a picture of me, for example? What makes well the various colors and the proportions and the distance between different colors in the in the in the image? This differentiates or or individualizes this picture and makes it different than other pictures. Okay, all this information is separated approximately equally in the red component, green component, and blue component. This is in RGB as opposed to YUV or YCBCR, where most of the information is contained in the luminous component. This is just like looking at this image in a black and white TV. If you have seen one of those, uh, I have seen, I had, I had, my parents had one of those. Um, and so most of the information is contained here. Look at the image and you immediately know that this image is about mountains and sky, and this is a house. Uh, on the countryside, this is a plane and so on. A fence probably here, right? So you, most of the information you get it from the is represented in the Y component. Less information is the represented is represented in the chrominous blue and chrominous red. You see, if you look at this, well, you get that this may be a house, but you are not sure whether these are mountains. Maybe these are trees or something like that. And if you look at this, the chrominous red, because this image contains less red than blue. I don't think you without. So if you don't look at the original image, you look only at this one. You don't really get the fact that this image represents a house and some mountains, as opposed to looking at this one, where you immediately know what this image represents. So most of the information from an image is concentrated in the Y component, and less information is concentrated in the chrominance blue and chrominance red, which means that this is more important than this one and this one, which means that we can compress these two more than we can compress this one. And this is exactly what happens when I'm doing subsampling, when I'm using, uh, instead of using 8 by 8 pixel blocks, as here, I use 4 by 4 pixel blocks here, so it's like twice the compression, okay? It's like 100% more compression here because this is not very important. Most of the information is contained here, and that's why uh, in the not only the image in JPEG or not only in JPEG, but in in the whole video and image compression world, we use YCVCR or YUV color space instead of RGB because we can compress this more than we compress the the luminous component. Did you understand, Andre? Um, so hope I'm not getting it. Yes, it was helpful. Okay, but I'm going to explain this more at the course, but this is the main idea why we use uh, YUV or YCBCR. Actually, YUV is the analog format and the uh, YCBCR is the digital format, but in our understanding here at the course, we are working only with digital data, so we are referring only to the mathematical model, to the mathematical color space, YUV or YCBCR, and they are pretty much the same, the same rule. Um, okay, um, so this is what I wanted to say. Um, if you have questions, if you... I, I advise you to try to do the lab before the deadline because if all of you do the lab in week number six, it may be crowded at the lab, so it's a good idea to try to do it before a part of you to try to do it before the deadline in in week number four, for example. But yeah, the deadline is week number six. Uh, if you have any other question, you can ask me now, or if you want to discuss about discuss project ideas, we can also do that. Um, but that, that that's that's everything I wanted to say for the first lab. So I wanted to discuss the, the the first lab task, and I did this. So in the remaining of the lab, I I'll just stay available here if one of you wants to ask me questions about the lab or about the project idea. I'll be available here on Teams, but otherwise I'll just I'll stop the the meeting. Right, so I'm guessing there are no 